Arnold knows the best way to build an amazing physique is by using classic, tried and true bodybuilding movements. He would never be caught dead doing any of those gimmicky exercises that are supposedly revolutionary that pop up on social media every now and then. No, for his whole bodybuilding career, he stuck to basic movements, which he performed at high volumes with extreme intensity, all supported by a high calorie protein rich diet with lots of rest. With a solid amount of hormonal support, of course. And that's Arnold's basic blueprint for building mass, boiled down to its most basic parts. But what are these exercises that brought him so much success? What are the special intensity techniques that he would use to shock his muscles into growing? And how much protein does the king of bodybuilding say you need to eat to really grow? And is all of what Arnold preaches really backed up by modern bodybuilding science? We're going to be answering all of those questions. Plus at the end of the video, I'll be giving you a full program to follow based off of Arnold's mass building blueprint. And we're starting with Arnold's favorite exercises for the muscle groups that everyone wants to grow. The chest, shoulders, biceps, and legs. For chest, Arnold stuck to three main exercises for his entire career. I think that the three exercises for chest that I have always done, the first year when I started training and the last year when I was training is bench press, incline press in different levels. So to start low, medium, and high, and then flies. The standard bench press is amazing for the sheer amount of muscle building stimulus it imposes on the pectoral muscles because of the heavy weight that can be used while bench pressing. And the muscles of the chest are actually fast twitch muscle fiber dominant, meaning they respond better in a muscle building context to heavy weights at lower reps rather than lightweight at higher reps. So the bench press is the perfect way to work all those fast twitch muscle fibers and force your chest to grow. Then the incline press is the perfect way to develop the upper chest. And like Arnold said, it should be performed at different levels of elevation to hit the different fibers of the pectorals. This advice is actually backed up by Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, who is a professor of exercise science at Lehman College in New York. In the practical application section of his paper, The Mechanics of Muscle Hypertrophy and Their Applications to Resistance Training, he says this, exercises should be varied in a multi-planar, multi-angled fashion to ensure maximal stimulation of all muscle fibers, which is pretty much a fancy way of saying that you should change up the angle at which you're performing your exercises especially with the chest because it's such a big muscle group with muscle fibers running at a bunch of different angles. If you guys are liking the breakdown of Arnie's old school training, make sure to like the video because it really helps out. And finally, Arnold's favorite exercise for building his chest, chest dumbbell flies. I mean, to me, the flies was an exercise that uh, gave me the full pectoral muscle development. Arnold loved the flies because he could get a huge stretch and huge range of motion with them. This type of stretch under tension is called the eccentric contraction. And because of the high degree of mechanical tension eccentric contractions impose on the muscle, they're really great for sending a really strong hypertrophic signal to the muscle, forcing it to grow. Naturally, as I was researching this video, I felt inspired to watch the classic bodybuilding documentary with Arnold pumping iron. But unfortunately, it wasn't on any of the streaming services that I have, and I didn't want to pay for a new one just so I could watch it. Luckily, thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Atlas VPN, I was able to use Atlas to change my digital location from Canada to the US, which gave me access to watch pumping iron for free. And you can use Atlas VPN like this to access all kinds of shows that are region locked. But it does more than just that. With Atlas VPN, you can finally feel safe browsing the internet. As when it's active, it gives you a full new IP and DNS address, meaning all your data will be encrypted and your your location will be hidden. Not only will Atlas VPN protect you from any future malware attacks or data breaches, but with its data breach monitoring, you can actually enter your email and find out if your personal information has been leaked in any past data breaches. This is especially important if you signed up for a bunch of different online accounts in the past, as one of them could have been compromised and you'd have no idea until something went wrong. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount. It means you can get a three-year subscription for just $1.83 a month, plus three months free with a 30 day money back guarantee. That's an amazing deal and time is running out. So get your deal by clicking the link in the video's description below. Thanks to Atlas VPN for sponsoring the video and now back to the gains. That's the chest. Now, of course, we can't go skipping leg day and Arnold's favorite for legs is the squat, but he isn't picky on what kind. Squats is, I think the most important exercise to create thighs, big thighs. Squats, rear squats, front squats, leg extensions, lunges, 
Barbell squats are one of the best exercises when it comes to packing on slabs of muscle onto your frame. This is because of the insane amount of raw stimulus magnitude that they pack. Raw stimulus magnitude is just how much muscle building stimulus an, an exercise brings to the table. Barbell squats, just like bench press, impose a ton of stress on your body. And assuming you're able to recover from this stress, it'll lead to adaptations that'll give you a ton of strength and muscle gains. But with a large stimulus and a large amount of stress, you're gonna get a whole lot of fatigue. So exercises like heavy squats should be done at the start of your workout when you're fresh and done less frequently throughout the week at high intensities to avoid overtraining and shouldn't be done super frequently throughout the week at high intensities for long periods of time to avoid overtraining. Now this doesn't mean that intermediate and advanced lifters can't do routines where they squat three or four times a week, but programs like this should only be followed for maybe four to 12 weeks at most. You can't follow a high intensity, high frequency program like that all year round and expect not to burn out. Now on to the biceps. Just like the chest, they're fast twitch dominant muscles, so they respond really well to heavy weights and low reps. For this, I'm talking sets of about eight to 10. And that's why Arnold's favorite exercise for overloading the fast twitch fibers of the biceps is the barbell curl. Then along with heavy barbell curls, Arnold always hit incline bench curls and concentration curls to hit the long head of the bicep to create those mountainous peaks on his biceps. And to create those beautiful boulder shoulders, Arnold always relied on shoulder pressing, shoulder pressing, and more shoulder pressing with a healthy amount of lateral raises thrown in for lateral delt development. But choosing the perfect exercises isn't enough to get massive like Arnold. You're also gonna have to train hard. But how hard? Well, going back to Dr. Schoenfeld's paper, he says, a hypertrophy-oriented program should employ a repetition range of six to 12 reps per set. And later he says, at least some of the sets should be carried out to the point of concentric muscle failure. Concentric muscle failure just means you're failing on the portion of the lift where your muscle is contracting or shortening under tension versus the eccentric contraction we talked about earlier where the muscle is lengthening under tension. So you need to hit sets around the six to 12 rep range and you need to train to failure some amount of the time, but training to failure isn't enough for Arnold. No, Arnold needs to show his body he means business by training past failure to quote unquote, shock the muscle. It's the shocking principle because you've now shocked the muscle. Why? Because I shocked the muscle. So Arnold used many different intensity techniques to train past failure and shock the muscle, but one of his favorites was drop sets. So with a drop set, you begin by working to failure, then you drop the weight by around 25% of the starting load, then you go to failure again and repeat this process one or more times. After that, all your muscle fibers will be completely spent because you have now shocked the muscle. And there's actually some scientific backing to this idea of shocking the muscle. In this 2019 systematic review of advanced resistance training techniques and methods, they found that overloading techniques like drop sets can provide some muscle building benefits, but it's not necessarily for the reasons that you or Arnold might expect. In this paper, they say, evidence suggests some beneficial effects from selected resistance training techniques, especially in the case of training volume, time efficiency, and intensity of effort. Furthermore, even though most of these techniques and methods did not show hypertrophy response compared to the traditional approach, it may serve as an alternative to prevent monotony, or it could improve readiness to training sessions. So pretty much they were saying that it was less that Arnold was shocking his muscles, and more that he was able to perform form a higher amount of training volume and the amount of time you had to train because drop setting allows you to do more in less time and also drop setting along with these other overloading techniques made Arnold's training less repetitive and possibly gave him the feeling that he was able to get a leg up on his body and because of this he attacked his workouts with even more fervor. Now you can train all you want but if you don't have the diet to back it up then good luck building any muscle. So how much protein does the king of bodybuilding say you really need each day? There's always of course a debate how much protein does the body need? I always lift off the formula that for every pound of body weight, I want to get one gram of protein. So he hits us with the standard one gram per pound of body weight. But is that legit advice or just bro science? Well, there's this amazing 2019 paper called Nutrition Recommendations for Bodybuilders in the Offseason, a narrative review. And the goal of the paper was to review the scientific literature on topics related to nutrition and dietary supplementation relevant for bodybuilders in the offseason and provide practical recommendations for energy intake, macronutrients, meal frequency, nutrient timing, and dietary supplements. And what were the recommendations? 
options. Well, among other things, like eating 10 to 20% over maintenance calories with the goal of gaining 0.25 to half a percent of your body mass per week, eating a high carbohydrate diet, and eating three to six meals a day, the paper recommends eating 1.6 to 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body mass per day, also known as 0.8 to one gram of protein per pound of body mass per day. So Arnold was on the upper end of what they suggest, but I'd rather be a little bit too high than a little bit too low when it comes to protein. So I'd say the king of bodybuilding is spot on. Now here's the program that you can follow that I've designed for natural lifters based off of Arnold's mass building blueprint. It's a push pull leg split that can be done as a six day week routine for more advanced lifters or as a three to five day a week routine for those who are newer to the gym. By following this plan, along with the dietary guidelines found in that review paper, you'll be sure to pack on a solid amount of mass in time. Now remember to check out my deal with Atlas VPN to get yourself a three year subscription for just 183 a month, plus three months free with a 30 day money back guarantee so you can keep yourself safe online. Now go watch my video on how Sylvester Stallone got ripped for Rocky III and I'll see you there.